the True Objective Podcast with Objectivist Girl Lauren Rumpler and Liberty.me writer Calvin Thompson. The True Objective Podcast, dispelling myths about our society. Hi guys, and welcome to another episode of True Objective with your host, Objectivist Girl, Lauren Rumpler, and of course, Calvin Thompson, hi writer everyone. for Liberty.me. I was going to say hi, say hi, Calvin, oh. but you, yeah, you, you jumped ahead. And I like he, he's, getting, he's getting so good at this. Uh, he knows exactly what I'm going to say. So anyway, um, I hope you guys are having a great night. We actually don't have any guests for tonight, so it'll just be the two of us, and uh, this should be really interesting. We're really excited, though. Um, so today starts our President's Series. So we're going to rank pro- the presidents from least undesirable to most undesirable, because no president is actually desirable. But um, Calvin has made a list of his le- his um what his, his the fa- least awful yeah the president. least awful he, I guess I, favorites I wouldn't say favorites because that would imply that we They're actually like them <laughs> most favorable shall we say not favorites most, fav- most favorable most favorable okay cool well do you want to go ahead and, and tell me who the first one is uh, we're just jumping right into this okay uh, well, yeah first why off, not first off criteria okay. uh, there can't be anything that. Uh, was not in their presidential yeah, career. Yeah, you can't like, use uh, anything that wasn't before their... George career. Washington and Teddy Roosevelt both did really cool stuff, for example, but their presidential careers were largely awful. Yeah, that and John Adams was an awesome founding father, but a horrible president. So, well, yeah, we... This is entirely presidential criteria on its own. Yeah. All right, so, number 44. The least awful, uh, in my opinion, is Thomas Jefferson. Uh, he was okay. not uh, affiliated with any religion. Uh, on national holidays, uh, the White House was open for people to come and shake hands with him and discuss important matters. Mm. Uh, in his inauguration, uh, when, when he first showed up at the Capitol, uh, whereas Washington and Adams came in carriages with lots of horses and all this pop and circumstance, he was just a dude who showed up on a horse uh, in Washington like one time. I like that. A few presidents actually did that. Well, he started the trend. Yeah, he did. Uh, he was, uh, of course, a uh, outspoken proponent of uh, civil liberties uh, well into his presidential career. Uh, quotes like, uh, kings are the servants of the people, rights are derived from nature, all that good, strong, uh, hardline libertarian stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so what kind of uh, dirt have you dug up on this man? So, I mean, there's some neutral stuff. I mean, the purchase of the Louisiana ter- Territory... Um, but he didn't really actually – it wasn't a win that he purchased the Louisiana Territory because the French really had to sell it off um, because of their financial issues. And the Napoleonic Wars tend to be expensive. Yeah. So we ended up getting a really good price on it. It was four cents an acre. But it, it still was still an awful lot of acreage. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it was a really good price, but it was mainly, I mean, he didn't really do anything in that effort. It was really just, I mean, it was good that we got the territory, but ultimately Jefferson didn't really do anything to get that territory. Did Jefferson really buy territory that the French had any right to sell would be my question. No, uh, there not There are an awful really. lot of uh, Native Americans that live there at the same time. Uh, yeah, well, as I mean, we're not going to... discovered when he sent them across there. Yeah, we're not going to get into the fact that he should hit PF, the Indians thing. No? We're going to... Yeah, no, we're going to get in that into that later anyway, so we might as well um, just ignore it for the time being because, yeah, I- I'll give you... We probably... Shouldn't have kicked the Indians. Off the I don't land. know what we you're talking about. Oh, I'm I was, sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, the the beginning government shouldn't have kicked. I'm getting better at this. I swear I am. the The founding fathers should not have kicked the Indians off their land. It would have been better if they hadn't done that. But yeah, I no mean, kidding. that's not something that we can really change. So I'm mm. I'm just trying to move. Once on the here. cow's been milked, there's no squirting the cream back into the udder now, is there? Oh my God! What is that from? Yeah. Is it not from something? I thought it was I mean, from something. It's probably okay. from somewhere. This is deteriorating. This is why we need guests. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, he also signed the embargo acts that kept the American ships out of European ports. Um, well, this is negative because, you know, free trade is always preferable. Um, the government had a very small army. Do, do you know what that was about? Actually, 
Uh, are, are you familiar with the uh, naval impressment of American citizens? Did, are you familiar with the term? No, I'm actually not. Oh, okay. Why don't you uh, like I'm, me? I'm not, I'm not justifying what he did or anything, but I'm giving this some context. Uh, so the War of 1812, uh, which was not quite here, but uh, th- th- this whole thing started a war soon after Jefferson's presidency. Yeah. So uh, in the Napoleonic Wars, uh, the British were extremely short on manpower. Uh, so what they started doing uh, was um, this old British practice called impressment. Uh, and essentially, if you were a uh, British uh, subject in the mm-hmm. UK of some naval aptitude and you were just wandering around town, they might kidnap you and make you force uh, make you uh, live on a ship and serve the navy for a while. Uh, you would be chained to the deck whenever a um, wow. Uh, whenever the ship was in port, so that way you couldn't escape. You got really terrible wages compared to the people who volunteered, and you were basically treated like human trash. Well, uh, that was a long-defended practice by the British courts. Um, In fact, it was only officially disbanded uh, after that war, I believe. But um, essentially, they got so desperate for manpower that they started doing it to Americans, too, saying, well, you guys didn't really secede. You're actually true British subjects, so we can kidnap you and force you to huh. serve us. So while I'm, I'm not saying that that was a, a great law to pass, you know, if, if, if you want to uh, go into a British port and risk getting kidnapped, that is your prerogative. <laughs> but but nonetheless, uh, he, he didn't just do that contrarily. Yeah, that, he, that was... he also, uh, the U.S. government had a very small army at the time, so he needed to do this in order to keep... actually its smallest. Uh, yeah. It was uh, 3,000 men when Jefferson uh, yeah. ended his presidency, if So I'm he had to keep the British from killing... American citizens. So it was actually uh, that's why I call this neutral. Okay. Um because he say he kept us from or he kept the US from getting into a war. Um but at the same time free trade was closed. And so it's neutral. Um and then there was the Non-Intercourse Act which partially lifted the embargo. So he did make some strides during his presidency to actually fix the free trade issue, but he didn't go all the way. It was like a half fix and so but, but those, on the other hand he did neutral. he did eliminate the slave trade to, to his credit uh, that that was kind of a yeah I'll give kind him of that. a cool thing I'll, I'll give him that now here are my issues with him um so those things weren't really issues they were just kind of neutral things mm. so the first is his inaugural address okay so in his inaugural address it says we have called by different na- we have been We have called by different names, brethren of the same principle. We are all Republicans. We are all Federalists. If there be any among us who wish to dissolve this union or to change its Republican form, let them stand undisturbed as monuments of the safety with which error of opinion may be tolerated where reason is left free to combat it. I know indeed that some honest men fear that a Republican government cannot be strong, that the government is not strong enough. But would the honest patriot in the full tide of successful experiment abandon a government which has so far kept him us free and firm on the theoretic and visionary fear of this government? The world's best hope may may by possibility want energy to preserve itself. I trust not. Um, So uh, the issue with this speech is that he he wasn't he didn't he was stating that the government is keeping them free instead of recognizing that freedoms come through nature. And so. I just have an issue with this philosophically. I think that um, I I I expected Jefferson to be more rational than this. Um, well, well, while I would agree with you, especially in today's historical context, you yeah. got to remember that at that time, this was only three presidencies in the um, the, the the country wasn't that bad at, at that point in time. I, I, I'll give I, you I that. read basically him saying, "Well, I'll give you uh, that. it hasn't sucked so far, so let's keep it up for a little bit and see what happens." I, I will if give he you that. lived in uh, today's time, I think he would be giving a very different uh, inaugural address. Yes, I I think that's fair. Um, I think that's very fair. I think he would be rolling in his grave if that were possible. Um, So the other issue that I have with Jefferson is that even though he was one of the greatest champions against slavery and was very vocal about it, he still continued to own slaves. Oh, he didn't just own them either. I know. He actually, he had children with... Quite a few of them. Quite a few of them. Whole acre of critters underfoot. Yeah. Yeah, um, I don't remember her name. Um, I think it was like Bethany or something. Yep. Yeah. It's, he, he, I mean, he, and, and I don't really know whether it was consensual or not. I mean, that's really, I, I tried reading up I, on I it. I don't know if any but I don't think uh, there situation any... where one person is a slave and the other person is a master can really be consensual. That's true. Because would she not have been basic element of compulsion? Would she not have been freed if he like really felt like she wanted to stay? So yeah, no, I agree with you. I mean, that's just 
So he was kind yeah. of a hypocrite. Yeah, uh, he while, was. While that is true, I would defy you to find any person on this list who was not a complete raging hypocrite. That is true. And like I said, the, this, the is, criteria, this is least awful. Yeah, the criteria is only that he is less awful than the person after him. I would so, say he's the least awful of them all. Um, and my last issue with him is that in his election, he used slanderous tactics to win. And this was the very first time that there were any slanderous tactics used to actually fight. And this was against his friend. John Adams and he were like really good friends before this and became friends again after this. But I mean, the fight that they had, I mean, Marbury versus Madison, ridiculous fight over that case. I mean, uh, do you know the story of Marbury versus Madison? No, I don't oh, think see, I Oh, see, I took constitutional law, so I know this story. I had to know the story because um, it was easier to pass the test when I thought about them as like stories instead of like court cases. Hmm. So this case was basically John Adams appointed judges to the Supreme Court. And he had, you know, because uh, during certain periods of presidencies, you're able to appoint judges. Right. And so that happened during Adams' presidency. And he um, wanted, I believe it was, uh, I believe it was Marbury. And so, yes, because Madison came in as the vice president to Jefferson and was like, no, we're not going to have this guy because the paperwork was actually on Adams or on Jefferson's desk when he came in for his first day as president. And so they hadn't actually put the paperwork. They'd signed all the paperwork. All of that was done. The documentation was done. But actually, he didn't give the papers to the proper person. It was supposed to go, I believe, to the secretary of state to be taken to the courts and to the Supreme Court. And they didn't transfer the documents. So Adams contested it in court and brought it. And it was a Supreme Court case. And uh, this was the precedent for this whole thing. And so um, I believe, I think Marbury got in. Um, but yeah, it was, it was, it was really bad. Mm. I mean, this, the, this was a huge fight between those two. And um, years later, right, they actually died on the same day. Do you know the story um, about that? No, but they were exchanging letters beforehand. Well, and that's actually our there, fun there, fact. There, there was yeah. kind of a running gag uh, of who would uh, outlive the other. And, uh, oh, John, you're kidding. No, no, no. <laughs> Yeah, and John Adams, funny. his last words. So he said, um, someone asked him if he knew what day it was, and he's, oh, yes, uh, this is Adams. It is the glorious 4th of July. It is a great day. It is a good day. God bless it. God bless you all. Then he lapsed into uh, uh, unconsciousness for a while, and then he kind of woke up a little bit later and mumbled to himself, Thomas Jefferson still survives. But <laughs> actually, actually, Jefferson died a couple hours earlier. In fact, he said yeah, that at the approximate time that dead. John Adams did. That's so funny. So... Um, so, yeah, our fun fact uh, about Jefferson is that he sold off his personal library when he went bankrupt because he went bankrupt after his presidency. And that library, uh, that is the core of the Library of Congress, is his book collection. Mm. Um, and both he and Adams both died on July 4th of 1826. I, I did, by the way, find the uh, president's last words, like all of them who have died up to date. Do we want to go through those at the end of all of them? Um, on July 4th? No, no, no. A every president who has died has recorded last words. Do we want to Um, those? we'll probably do that as like a follow-up episode. That's okay. like a really awesome follow-up episode. So okay. yeah, we'll totally go over that. That sounds great. Right. Uh, so stay tuned for our last episode when we're going to go over president's last words, which is great. Um, cause you know, they really honest when they're dying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so Anyway, um, so who was – I guess he's not so bad, um, but – No, and uh, there were a couple of things I also – He was mention. a hypocrite. So we've, we've summed up that he is a hypocrite and um, – He got rid of the whiskey tax, which I don't think I he covered. Did, he did start slanderous tactics. He started as slanderous part tactics. Of, but, part of politics. No, no, no. In his defense, <laughs> uh, John Adams was someone worth slandering as president. <laughs> No, no, he was an awful, awful president of the United <laughs> States. If you're going to slander somebody in a campaign, it might as well be someone he who really deserves was. it. He really was. And he did, um, Thomas Jefferson, to his credit, did let the Alien and Sedition Acts lapse. He did. Um, which is why Adams did not make our top ten. So sorry, uh, the, for, the other sorry thing. for the, you know, forward news, but Adams did not make this first ten list. So The, the, the other <laughs> thing that... Uh, Jefferson did, which I want to uh, mention, is uh, when he uh, made peace with the um, 
Barbary states and the Treaty of Tripoli, mm-hmm. uh, he made abundantly clear that America was not an explicitly Christian nation. Ah, nice. I like it. So yeah, uh, I, see uh, how, everyone... I see how this works. So, so you let me say my horrible things about him, and then you go back. You leave some good things so that you can end on a good. I see how this works. You're okay, I'm gonna on. have to keep that in mind because I'm pro. I have to be pro the next. Uh, the next um, well, good episode. Good luck because they're going to so get more awful. They are, which is going to make it harder for me to try and defend them. But we decided to alternate since neither of us actually like these people. So, but so it makes it a little more bearable. So, yeah, no, that's that's interesting. Um, yeah, yeah. Anytime uh, any uh, hardcore conservatives tell you uh, that America is a uh, Christian nation, quote some Jefferson at them, and they'll shut right up. Nice. So, um, we should probably keep moving because we're already. 15 minutes of the podcast. Well, well Jefferson is worth right? talking about. Okay. So, so who's your next one? Calvin Coolidge. Aside from the really classy name on that guy, uh, he cut taxes four times. Uh, he blocked uh, just about every government attempt to control business during his office. Uh, he was for low interest rates. Uh, he retired the national debt. He signed the Indian Citizenship Act and uh, was responsible for quite a few inspirational quotes. Uh, my favorite is... Uh, The men and women of this country who toil are the ones who bear the cost of the government. Every dollar that we carelessly waste means that in their life, uh, excuse me, means that their life will be so much more meager. Uh, Economy is idealism in its most practical form. Wow. So classy name, uh, good libertarian principles. I I, I feel like that's kind of an overriding theme in Calvin's, but maybe that's just my own personal experience. In studying this guy, I know I'm taking con, but I, I really have to say in studying this guy, if I had to choose a favorite president, it would it would be Calvin Coolidge. It, it was honestly a bit of a toss up between him and Jefferson. I, I I think I went with Jefferson as much because um, when they're both equally good presidents, the stuff that they did while not president kind of becomes a little bit more relevant. And yeah, he was responsible for all that other good stuff too. Yeah, yeah. I got a really soft spot for Jefferson, um, but I'll tell you what I I really think Coolidge was my favorite president if I had to pick one. Well, he did um, support prohibition. He he did that. D- I'm con. Stop being con. <laughs> he did. He did support the prohibition. Um, he um, supported U.S. involvement in the World Court or the U.N. Um, oh, he didn't actually. Fun. He didn't actually make any move towards that, but he just supported it. So, like, we didn't get involved with the U.N. during his presidency. Mm. We just he supported us getting involved, which it's not obviously he didn't do enough research because the U.N. sucks. Um, and then. Um, well, you, you got to realize also it was a lot more theoretical back when he was around. So yeah. there, there was more excuse to be ignorant. And, and Same well, thing with Jefferson when he was talking about how, you know, this experiment is still ongoing. Uh, th- th- there was a lot more uh, that's guesswork true. involved you, you in could, both of those You cases. could tell way later that the U.N. I mean, nowadays you can totally tell the U.N. is BS, but um, it was probably not as clear uh, during his day because mm-hmm. um, it wasn't as well developed as it is now. Unfortunately, it's developed and it's like a new monster. Anyway, so um, the, the the other thing is, and it's not really his fault, so I probably should have put this on the neutral list, mm. but crony capitalism was rampant through bra- backroom deals with the government policy makers during his presidency. He, I mean, even though he lowered taxes and lowered um, and, and blocked almost every government attempt to control business through his time in office. There's only so much he can do. Right. And it's not really his fault. His the It's the fault of having a government. As long mm. as you have here, here. Peop- congressional people uh, doing, their thing. doing doing their thing, they're going to try and get extra money in their pockets by, yep. pa- by letting certain businesses out of legislation. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's really the issue. It's not the f- – and it, a lot of people cite – his presidency with with uh, the reason that they believe that free market doesn't work because there was crony capitalism during his presidency. Mm. But it's not about free markets not working. It's that free markets don't work when there's not a complete severance between economics and state. You have to completely now, separate them all together. No, no, Otherwise, no, it won't no, Not to play devil's advocate too much here, but isn't oh, that the, exactly the same thing that people say about communism? Is it only works if it's completely realized? Well, yeah, that's really how any anarchal state can work. But um, communism isn't going to work anyway because other oh. Otherwise, oh, I see. you know, people are going to fight over land and there's going to be horrible, horrible, horrible things that happen. Mm-hmm. Um, at least um, anarcho-capitalists want people, want private businesses to protect property and all of those other things. Communists don't even want private businesses. I mean, they just want complete 
non-existence of anybody protecting anybody's rights and that's that's scary i don't even i can't i don't even want to fathom that that's terrifying Mm. um and then the other thing the real thing that i had a problem with was two things he banned japanese immigration to america Mm -hmm. um i didn't know about that yeah yeah not i'll tell you what he did not not happy about that which is why he falls on the least awful is he did not throw them in concentration camps like everyone's favorite progressive yeah and you know just throwing that and the other thing was i think that there was a lot of pressure on him to actually do this by you know the his constituents are you apologizing Um, for uh banning immigration um i think that sometimes presidents are forced into doing something Oh. Um, because of their constituents and their constituents making, Whole they Overton are, they thing. are supposed to be servants of the people. So they're not supposed to. That has some frightening applications if the people are all, uh, idiots. Exactly. Or, or... Like the Japanese immigration ban. Yeah. I mean, and I think that this was really just the people made the wrong decision and he made the right decision in listening to them because he is the servant of the people. Oh, I see. Right. Okay. So and th- th- this is a bit of a side note here, but yeah. h- how do you feel about that? Do you feel that a uh, public servant is doing his duty if he listens to the will of the people in instituting something awful? If people beg for an authoritarian that state, only... are you doing the right thing by giving it to them? Um, I think that's a different question. Um, mm. I think that there are two different questions. I think it's really just that um, that when if you're going to have a public servant, then they have to listen to the people because that's their title. Well, that, that's why we. That's have their Hitler, title. Not you know, that it is good to Germany have. What it at the time. Yeah, but that's why it's not good to have a public servant. Right, but at least if you're going to have one, do exactly what the job entails. I might not so. completely agree, but that's at least a fair argument. Yeah. Okay. So the last thing is that he put Marines in Nicaragua to suppress revolt and then stayed there for seven years afterwards. I'm not. I don't. That like, sounds awfully familiar. I hate. I oh yeah, it does. Hmm. I wonder who did that. Uh, Bush. Yeah. <laughs> I think our audience is smart enough to have got that. <laughs> anyway, um, and then, uh, but but yeah, I mean, uh, he's. I can't be too hard on the guy. I mean, he really he cut taxes four times. I mean, name me any other president that did that. So um, I'm trying to think of how many presidents have cut taxes once. Yeah. So fun fact. Um, his nickname was Silent Cow. Uh, and I can relate. It's hilarious because when a woman bet a friend that she could get Coolidge to utter more than two words, what he said to her was, you lose. <laughs> and nice. So he's very funny and quiet. And he was greatly admired by Reagan. Uh, well, pity that Reagan didn't actually, you know, follow his example. Yeah, we're not like we're that. not going to talk about Reagan today. Um, uh, no, there's, there's a special spot for him yeah, much, much later. Special spot. Um, Coolidge also used the radio frequently for his addresses and was the first to have his State of the Union address given over radio. And he was only he was the only president born on the 4th of July. Hmm. Yep. Um, And so, yeah. um, So that's a little bit about Coolidge. All right. Forty two. Who do we got? Dwight D. Eisenhower. Okay. He he only went overseas once uh, with the troops. Uh, Okay. The the biggest thing that uh, I really liked about him was his uh, rant about the uh, military-industrial complex. In fact, I believe he's the guy who coined the term. Uh, listen to it on the YouTube sometime. It's well worth it. Um, let's see. He passed the 22nd Amendment, which limited uh, presidential terms. About time after FDR had his rampage of, what, 20, 20 almost 20 years, too. Um, let's see. Uh, Alaska and Hawaii became uh, states uh, with him. Um I don't know if that's really a good or a bad thing, just just kind of a factoid. Yeah, that's really neutral. I like I, I kind of look at acquiring territory as pretty neutral. Yeah. Um now uh let's see. Um what else do I got here? Uh yeah, he talked about uh the um unwanted influence of the private uh, uh sector in uh the military as well. Yeah. Um yeah, definitely very skeptical of the Pentagon. And I feel like he was a lot more qualified to to say that than most of his opponents too because he was actually supreme commander in the Second World War. Yeah. It, it seems like the guy kind of understood the uh the, the pitfalls of that. So are you ready to have this fight because you know what I'm going to say? Do tell. So what's really bad about him is that he did not publicly endorse the civil rights movement in an attempt to keep di- Dixiecrats on his side for the next election. So he did it not because he didn't believe in the civil rights movement, but so that he could keep Dixiecrats on his side so that he could win his next election. Yeah. Yeah. That that is pretty typical pandering. 
again, yeah, not great, but less awful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, he did create the interstate highway system. Uh, so who, who Wait, will build the roads you're without? You're supposed to have a response to that, though. Well, right there. I, I, your response I, is right there. Oh. <laughs> you're missing your response. To, to the fact, I'll say it. So to the fact that he didn't uh, support the civil rights movement. He did, however, send in... 1,100 paratro- paratroopers from the 11, 101 Airborne to Little Rock when nine black students were admitted there for the first time in history. So he did protect them. However, however, there's another part to this, and this is why the whole thing is bad. Mm. He didn't actually act to protect the children. It had nothing to do with protecting the children. I didn't suspect it did, which is why I didn't mention it. Yeah, but he actually did it to provide legitimacy for federal authority. So it was just to prove that the federal government can do what they want. So, yeah. I see. And you have to respect them. Mm -hmm. And so because people weren't respecting what uh, the Supreme Court had ruled, he sent in troops. Yep. So Uh, the other thing I will say is he did not give uh, the CIA or the military a very long leash. When he was around. No, he didn't. He, he made sure that all the big decisions were run past him. Yeah, I did. I did like that. That was good. Uh, um, he ended price controls after World War II, which were going crazy, uh, as a matter of fact. Mm-hmm. And uh, he did not send troops to Vietnam. Mm-hmm. So, so props there. Props. Uh, let's see. He passed For not the, doing something bad. <laughs> he passed. Well, a lot of people wouldn't have made that decision that way. Remember, he's just got to be not as bad as the next person after him. <laughs> uh, and he also uh, passed the Refugee Act, uh, which allowed uh, 214,000 more immigrants than mm, were previously yeah. allowed. Uh, in- interesting fact, by the way, talking about the highway system a little bit ago, um, one out of every five miles of highway in this country, uh, federal or state. No, no, it's straight. You know why that is? Oh, I thought they curve every... Every, like, five miles to keep you awake. No, no, no. You got it backwards. Uh, One of every five miles has to be straight, and that's in case there's an emergency. Uh, A plane can always use it as a landing strip. But isn't it curved and it takes you longer to get places because they want to keep people awake while they're driving? I think you need to cut back on the drugs, (laughs) Lauren. Maybe I just heard that somewhere and it's not real. Um, So, I mean, that's what I was told by somebody. Maybe that's not right. Anyway, um, I'd love to go look that up. Anyway, but he didn't stop the creation of the Department of Health, Education, and Welfare. No, he didn't. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's a huge, huge error in judgment. Yet, he didn't actually create them. He just didn't stop them. (laughs) And he should have. So, but I am mad at him for something he didn't do. So, um Take that as you will. What do you um, think of his position in Korea? Armistance in Korea? Do, do, do you know what an armistice is? He created the peace. Yeah, oh, that, that's why. Did I, I put that on my bad list? Yeah, you put that on your bad list. Oh, I, that meant to go on the good list. Uh huh. Slow clap. Oh, slow clap. <laughs> no, I'm the one that gets to clap. All right. Uh, yeah. Moving right along. Uh, our fun fact with Eisenhower. Uh, he served as a junior varsity football coach and a cheerleader at the same time. He was one of the early male cheerleaders. So, Whoa! Uh, wow! I don't know how to feel about that. Well, uh, it's it's definitely interesting. Okay. <laughs> we'll go with that. I don't know. He wasn't a very macho-looking man. He probably pulled it no, off better than a lot of guys would. not very macho. Um, All right. So who's next? 41. Uh, Martin Van Buren. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah, I, I have a lot of friends, actually, who say Martin Van Buren is the best of the presidents. And, well, I wouldn't agree there. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm dead serious. I, I, I asked around a lot before this uh, show, and I don't think they were kidding with me. Uh, he, uh, let's see, he set up a system of bonds for the national debt. Uh, let's see, he uh, advocated for lower tariffs and free trade. Um, let's see, he reversed Andrew Jackson's uh, domestic policies and looked for peace at home as well as abroad. Uh, let's see. He uh, tried to settle a financial dispute uh, with Mexico uh, peaceably instead of by force. Um, let's see. And uh, if you're into the whole secessionist, you know, every state should be independent thing. Uh, he denied Texas permission to join the union. So there's that. <laughs> that makes I know him, a lot of, I know a lot of progressives, too, that would agree that Texas freedom. never needed to be part of the union. Um, OK. Yep. Neither does New Hampshire. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, as far as stuff that just sort of happened. Uh, yeah. Okay, so um, in 1839, Joseph Smith, uh, the founder of uh, Mormonism, uh, visited Van Buren and basically begged for uh, United States help uh, because um, 
in, uh, I believe it was uh, Nauvoo, Missouri, and uh, Independence as well. Uh, basically, people were being forced from the state. Uh, the governor there uh, issued an executive order known as the Extermination Order, uh, which basically authorized people to kill Mormons and drive them out of Missouri. Uh, and Who while- passed this? Uh, the uh, governor of Missouri at the time, uh, oh Lil, God. Lil Burn Boggs. Yeah, yeah. The Mormons had it rough early on, which is kind of interesting because when they got a little more established, I mean, I'm not a fan they... of the religion, but wow, holy crap. Okay, anyway, go ahead. Uh, yeah. Woo! So, so Joseph Smith came begging for uh, United States help uh, against uh, or, or, or help for the Mormons uh, because uh, Missouri was getting violent against them. And uh, Van Buren said, apparently, he's quoted as saying. Your cause is just, but I can do nothing for you. If I take up for you, I shall lose the vote of Missouri. So that happened. I'm going to go with negative. Yeah. Because he cares more about votes than. Uh, he was also, uh, as you were talking before, he, uh, with, with, with the whole, you know, the uh, servant of the people thing, mm-hmm. he considered slavery to be morally wrong personally, but he also said it was sanctioned by the Constitution. So yeah. So basically little... it wasn't his fight. Yeah. I'm... So th- th- that becomes my question is when it's a really tough issue or not really tough, but a really terrible issue like slavery. Do you still believe that it's the uh, president's no, job? No, to support no, no, the world? no, no, no. Oh, because, OK. Well, you I can't. See what you did there. That's the thing is that there are certain things by we are endowed with rights by nature. And so you can't take away something from people that is endowed to them by nature. And so that's not something that should be in their jurisdiction to judge anyway or anyone's. So it it doesn't apply to this case um, when they're being a servant of the people. You can't be a servant of the people and rule some people's rights illegitimate um, wow. because that's endowed by nature and it's not within their jurisdiction to judge. It's like it's like them. It's like if people wanted the government to. um Deal, deal with gay marriage, um, which is reserved as a right to the so, states. So it's only okay for it's anything on, in their jurisdiction. So it's only a good thing if um, presidents, if presidents disobey their natural inclinations and go with the will of the people. That's only okay if they're making good decisions. The second they make bad decisions, no, decisions no, 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 that's what Mormon I'm saying. Player, it's, then no, it's no, 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 no. It's about uh, jurisdiction. No, it's about jurisdiction. It's about the fact that they weren't given the right to handle it anyway. But it doesn't matter because the government sucks okay so you know it doesn't really matter whether they they should be doing their right as a, they should be doing a thing wow that it was a nice sentence a pub, you got there they should be a public servant it doesn't matter if they should actually be a public servant or not and go with the will of the people it's that there shouldn't be a government in the first place but that's okay we're not going off on this rant we all know how we both feel about the government so we're just going to keep talking about the issues with this okay, guy so, so give me so your van, bad stuff about van buren van buren, van buren First of all, I just want to point out that he was a New Yorker. Well, that's an indictment all on its own. Yeah. Uh, you, you don't really need to say anything more. Yeah, he's he's a New Yorker. So, I mean, I don't even know how he made this list. Um, so, <laughs> and he really, he was the reason for the the word, the concept career politician. He was, I, I, he coined I, that term. That was him. I don't know that coining that term is particularly a bad thing because if it's an existing problem, it needs to be identified. No, 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 no. Term. It wasn't that he said, like, I'm a career politician. It was that he was the first real career politician. He might have been the first real career president. He was president, what made but people bureaucracy, coin that term. Bureaucracy exists whenever there's a state. He was not the first career politician in this country. He might have been the first career president, but that's not quite the same thing. Mm, okay. Um, he continued to take Native American land. Yeah, Seminoles, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah, down in Florida, or drove them down to Florida. Yep. Uh, engaged in the U.S. and the Seminole conflict, a very expensive war against the Indians in Florida. Mm-hmm. So he spent a ton of citizens' money on this war against individuals who just happened to be existing in Florida. <laughs> so Actually, they weren't in Florida. They were uh, in northern, uh, more northern areas than that. It's just they oh. fled into the swamps because the uh, federal agents couldn't follow them down there. Oh, okay, I see. It was just kind of the one, one of those, you know, we're, we're down way, here to try to find us type either situation. Either way, the point is, is that he spent a ton of money on, you know, he did. fighting people that weren't really doing anything wrong. Yep. Um, so he also created a gag rule that prevented any discussion about legislation that would end slavery. Anybody that says it's not okay, that's that's curbing freedom of speech. I mean, he literally curbed freedom of speech so that you you could talk about anything as long as it doesn't have to do with legislation that's, you know, anti-slavery. So now, he, was they that couldn't gag even talk rule, about it. Was that gag rule uh, just in, in, in just Congress? The yeah, I was about to say that that's 
They, they still do that nowadays, don't they? Uh, not to my knowledge. If they uh, do, then that's something serious that we need to take That's up. basically just keeping things on topic. He was saying that oh, we're not going to go here. That's that's no, far no, no. from banning free speech. That's but, banning But it's like saying it. during my presidency we're not going to end slavery, so just don't talk about it. And it's like, it's like yeah, I, I mean, it, whatever. Anyway, so um, he supported the Spanish in the Armistead controversy. Amistad. Amistad, Amistad. Are you familiar with that? Um, a little bit. If you want to inform uh, everybody else, basically, though. a slave ship called the Amistad ended up in the U.S. Uh, yep, because the uh, slaves mutinied and basically washed up here. So the question was, mm-hmm. uh, what to do with them? And yeah. he supported sending them back to Spain because he was classy that way. Yeah, and a lot of people wanted him to free the slaves uh, uh, and John give them Quincy back Adams the ship. Among them, if I'm not uh, mistaken. Yes, and by the way, he lost that. Um, we did uh, the the U.S. government did actually send the slaves back. Um, I take I think it took like two or three years. Yep. Um, and he sent them back, uh, not because he wanted to, but because that ended up being the decision. Um, yep. and they paid the they compensated them for the ship, the Spanish for the ship, but they sent the slaves back to Africa. So, um, and um, he opposed the annexation annexation of Texas. D- D- do you think that Texas needed to become a state of the union? I, think, I-, I see no problem. With I think opposing... if they wanted to join. Then I think that that's good. I mean, okay. right. I think they should have had the ability I think you to might join need if to they hand wanted. In your it. libertarian card, Lauren, because uh, who? What about the people who lost think, the vote in Texas? I think that any small town that would like a majority, to start a majority cannot vote for everybody to become a part of the U.S. territory. That's it fair. has to be a completely consensual decision. Okay, that's fine. All right, I'll I'll give you that. I will give you that. That's fair. Okay, so um, you win that one. Yeah. Touche. You're right. Okay, so fun fact. Um, he was the first president that was born an American citizen. He spoke English as his second language, and he was the first president that wasn't of British descent. He was actually Dutch. Hmm. Yeah, Deutsch. I guess that actually, would that's German, the, uh, but that's Vambiran. okay. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, number 40 is uh, Zachary Taylor. Uh, huh. my, my strongest selling point yeah. with him is that he didn't really do anything. Um, like I like wh- I like when they don't do anything either As because they can't screw anything up. <laughs> uh, yeah, most consi- I, 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 actually, the way I uh, picked him out is uh, I started googling uh, the worst presidents, and I found a lot of the ones who are considered the worst because they didn't do anything. And the one who did the least is Zachary Taylor, and so I was like, "That's my man." Uh, mm-hmm. He also uh, helped. Um, combat the uh, manifest destiny policy basically we we just take over uh you know the continental united states because god wills it <laughs> i mean, I mean <laughs> you know that, that might sound funny now but that was a pretty terrifying prospect back in the day and a lot of people were on board with it mm. uh he was inexperienced with politics uh generally inept and so yeah didn't really do that much <laughs> and that is my strongest argument <laughs> okay all right so my issues with the guy mm-hmm. um he disliked anarchism um, I don't think you're going to find anyone on this list who didn't. If that's all you got against them, that's not that No, bad. it's not all, but this is my first argument. It's my weakest. So annual message talking about the U.S. government. In my judgment, its dissolution would be the greatest of calamities. And to advent that should be the study of every American. Upon its preservation must depend our happiness and that of countless generations now, to come. Depend our happiness? Government is happiness. I kind of like part <laughs> of what he said there. The part where he said... Um, um, let's see. Uh, its dissolution would be the greatest of calamities, and to event that should be the study of, study every, of, of every, every American. American. Because I they'll the, come to the conclusion. <laughs> exactly. I think that uh, a lot of people would be yeah, like, if they actually had out. to study it, mm-hmm, maybe uh, the state isn't that justified after all. Yep. So. Truth that went out. Yep. Um, that's why we do this show. Um, so um, my second argument is that he rejected the compromise proposed by Henry Clay. Um, The Compromise of 1850. Uh, It was a package of five separate bills passed in the United States in September 1850, which diffused a four-year confrontation between the slave states of the South and the free states of the North regarding the status of territories acquired during the Mexican-American War. This bill would have respected the Ten Amendment the Tenth Amendment, but also would have kept blacks in chains. So it was a lose-lose situation between support and rejection. But though freedom is always desirable, it is never okay to leave human rights to be decided by anyone but themselves. The only person who has the right to enslave someone is themselves. Well, I agree with that. I got to say that all the um, uh, the circumstances leading up to the Civil War— 
There was really no getting out of that by that point. That I don't think that so was going to happen. It, and, it needed uh, to be his doing nothing was better than the people who actively made it worse. You know what irritated like Lincoln, me? For you know what irritated me the most is that both Adams and Jefferson were anti-slave slavery proponents. Mm-hmm. They were all about abolishing slavery, and yet during their presidency, they didn't make any move when government was small enough that they could have made a move. Why did they not? Why? Why? Because it was their perspective that it was not government's role, that people would eventually just kind of get rid of the habit oh, on Oh, whatever. <sighs> oh, so you're saying that the government should force people to make morally correct no, decisions? I no, think, I think that the government should recognize people's right to themselves. Huh. Yeah. And if it's going to protect rights, if that's its function, if we're going to have one, at least have it actually protect the rights of the people. And I have to say, I think I'm learning a lot about you in doing this show. No, I'm just saying, hypothetically, if we have to have a government, which I think is never a good scenario, but if we have to have one, at least it should be serving its purpose, which is respecting the rights of the people and working to make sure everyone else respects the rights of the people. And those are people. Those men and women in chains were people, and they deserved that right. They deserve the right to be treated like a decent human being and have their rights respected just as everyone else. Can I get an amen? <laughs> so, um, so what fact do you have for me? The the last argument that I have against oh, okay. Taylor is three of the people he appointed to his cabinet were charged with corruption. So he's clearly not a very uh, good well, judge of character. My, my question is this. <laughs> And this this might be a bad thing. It might not be. My, my question is, uh, was that because they were more uh, diligent in prosecuting people for corruption back then? Might have been. I didn't think that about might that. Be a, that might be a good thing. Huh. Is you know he he actually uh, followed through when people started uh, misbehaving. Okay. Well, N- nowadays no, he was a president dead. nowadays a presidential appointee would never be charged with corruption, no matter he what was they dead. were dead. Anyway, Next so rule. fun fact: mm-hmm. Taylor's daughter married Jefferson Davis. Oh, I bet for- that was a fun marriage. <laughs> For those of you that don't know who Jefferson Davis was, I think everyone here knows who Jefferson Davis is. How do you not know who Jefferson Davis is? He was the future president of the Confederacy against, and she did this against her father's wishes. Uh, But she died of malaria three months later. And he was the last president to own slaves while in office. Oh, by the way, he owned slaves. That's another one. Yeah. Well, again, you're going to be getting a lot of that. But on he was the last one, so yay! I, I, I feel the need to clarify again that these are not good people that I'm listing. <laughs> these are the ones who were not actively malevolent, which is where uh-huh. we're going to go uh, come the later uh, sections of the list. All right, so tell me who's the next guy. All right, William Henry Harrison. Okay. And uh, honestly, he probably should have been earlier on the list. Dude was president for a month. Yeah, he just died. A lot of that presidency, (laughs) he he was in a hospital bed, so he didn't really do squat. He didn't. Uh, Beth, the only thing that I can really say to his favor besides not being there for very long is that he said he wouldn't serve a second term. Maybe he would have. Um, Yeah. Uh, He did fulfill that promise. Uh, All I have to say about him is quack. Quack? Quack. Lame, Lame duck. Get it? Quack. Um, so, uh, but the bad thing about him was he was the first candidate to be marked as a simple man. So they sold him as simple man during his candidacy. Um, that was a tactic. It wasn't, he wasn't actually a simple man. You you can't be that stupid and become the president of the United States. That's true. Although it's amazing how many people will buy it. So. Although I would say that George W. Bush makes a pretty good argument that maybe that's changed. Yeah, he is the reason for George W. Bush. I mean, mm. the country started really loving the simple man tactic because of William Henry Harrison. Mm, perhaps. So, yeah, we're, thank you, asshole. <laughs> and there just went the clean. On oh, the if we can swear now, all right. <laughs> we're good now. So, um, anyway, uh, his fun fact was he's the last president born a British subject and first president to die in office. Told you. And served the shortest term to date, 31 days, 12 hours, and 30 minutes. Okay, so who's... That is a... Okay, wow. I know! So, um... Yeah. Who's next? Rutherford B. Hayes. Who do I get to rip apart now? Rutherford B. Hayes. Rutherford B. Hayes was kind of interesting. He was a firm supporter of Reconstruction uh, policies all uh, throughout his early political career, where he basically said that the South didn't have the right to rule itself after the Civil War. But uh, upon becoming president, uh, pretty much his first major act was to uh, end Reconstruction and return the South to home rule. So he talked a a pretty tyrannical game, but when push came to shove, he uh, actually let the South have what it wanted. So props for that. 
Yeah. Uh, the other thing, and you'll you'll find uh, a lot of presidents were uh, fighting against this uh, in the uh, 19th century, uh, but. Back then, uh, there was uh, something called the uh, spoils system with uh, most bureaucratic appointments, where basically any time a president won an election, uh, all the bureaucratic offices would be replaced with people from that party. They would just fire everybody and hire. You know, if a Republican won, it would be all Republicans. If a, um, a Whig won, it would be all Whigs. And he got rid of that and uh, created more of a meritocracy. But I don't really know if that's a good or a bad thing because it's kind of a question of would you rather have um, people who get their political positions just by pushing uh, the party uh, agenda or do you want career bureaucrats who don't change regardless? It seems like both of those are fairly piss poor options, quite yeah. frankly. Yeah. I don't know. Not, what, what do you think about that? Um, I have – I really don't have much issue with the guy. Um, my issue is really just – the way that he became president. So uh -huh. he actually became president through fraud. Um, so this was like the most contested election ever. Um, oh. Yeah. So they were actually counting the ballots up until the day before Inauguration Day. Nice. Yeah. And so there is almost certain, like, they're almost historians are almost 100% certain that this entire election was rigged. Um, well, that does tend to happen. Yeah. And well, I mean, it's so I can't accuse the rest of them of it because I don't actually have hard right. evidence. But historians actually know that this was a fraudulent act. In fact, his nicknames were Rutha Fraud and his fraudulency, which kind of rolls fun, off the tongue. Our fun fact. And by the way, under his presidency, and I hold this against him, I don't know if anybody else will, but I will. Under his presidency, alcohol was banned at the White House. Okay, so he was also and how, how the heck, how the heck are you going to do that hell. job? You, you already broke I the can't. Earth. How the hell are you going to do that job sober? Not real I mean, well, apparently. No, not real well. Don't say that. Okay, so number 37, <laughs> James Garfield. Uh, as you just mentioned, uh, he lives he for... Um, <laughs> Uh, he, I, I believe it was four months that he was president, and then he was shot and lived for 80 days after that, uh, but he didn't really govern during that time. Mm -mm. Uh, let's see. Uh, the biggest thing that he did was he uh, got rid of the post office's star route rings. Uh, okay, so um, you, know, you, you know back then uh, the um, U.S. Postal Service didn't really have much in the way of competition. I mean the, the feds shut down Lysander Spooner because he tried to provide a uh, private alternative. Mm -hmm. So um, essentially in rural routes – uh, they didn't have U.S. postmen deliver the mail. They mm. would they would do it to the lowest bidder. Uh, okay. If you could guarantee that the mail would get there and uh, do it for the cheapest, they would give you the contract. But uh, essentially, essentially, uh, some groups realized that they could bribe the um, uh, the people in charge of assigning the route contracts mm. and just you know get paid more than uh, the route was probably worth. So there was a lot of corruption there. He got rid of that. Uh, in fact, he said. Um, that the votes had barely been counted when uh, people in uh, various political offices, especially the post office, just surrounded him wherever he went, uh, begging to keep their jobs uh, because uh, they knew he was uh, rather anti-corruption. Uh, he called it a barrage of fear and greed, uh, and he was convinced that the only uh, way out of that nonsense was some type of civil service reform. Uh, but unfortunately, he didn't really live long enough to get through to it, and you know, he would he would have probably made plenty of other mistakes that he lived longer, but he did not. Yeah. I um really couldn't find much wrong with the guy actually. So I, uh, so there you go. It, but he you know he didn't really have much of a presidency, mm -hmm. so it was really hard. And to in find that anything. sense, it was a success because it didn't really happen. Yeah, that's true. Um, so fun fact: he was the last self-made man. He rose from poverty to become a teacher, lawyer, college president, and army general. He was also the first left-handed president, as well as being a sitting representative, senator-elect, and president-elect, all at the same time. He was the first lefty. He's the first lefty. Could you say that his presidency was not quite right? <laughs> See what I did there? You were horrible. I apologize, our audience. You were horrible. I, that's so funny. I swear it won't happen again. Okay. Oh, my God. That's right. awesome. Number 36, James Buchanan. All right. Another uh, Let's get real good here. small government guy. Yeah. Um, okay. First off, he did not support secession, but he also did not support a war to prevent secession. So props there. Uh, he did apparently understand that two wrongs don't make a right. Uh, let's see. Uh, he was a uh, a lawyer for a while, uh, and uh, one of his favorite uh, sayings was, uh, I acknowledge no master but the law, which is pretty cool. I, I think that's a fairly uh, 
and cap sentiment. It, it, there, there is nothing there that uh, is contradicted by anarcho-capitalism. The law? I wouldn't say the law is an anarchy concept. Mm, we're not talking about government. We're talking about law. Law. By, yeah, I, I know. Law, by is which one of, law is one of those nebulous terms that a lot of people Isn't it created define. by government, the law? You, you could argue that. You could I mean, also unless argue... we're talking about objective law. I, I mean, think that's, uh, that's my understanding. Of okay. If he's talking about objective law, then that's discovered, I not mean, he's actually been dead for a long time, created. so there's no way to tell for sure, but that's always been my understanding. Yeah, the difference being, is uh, the reason what's being, discovered versus what's created. Well, the reason I think that's why I meant it is because he's also noted as uh, saying things like uh, he said that the Constitution was a set of uh, restraints imposed not by arbitrary authority, but by the people upon themselves and their representatives. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, he said that... Um, uh, the people's interest and the government's interest may seem identical, but uh, to the eye of local and sectional prejudice, they always appear to be conflicting. And the jealousies that will perpetually arise can be repressed only by the mutual forbearance which pervades the Constitution. Mm. So he was a constitutionalist, which makes me think that he was more about uh, natural law than he was uh, any sort of uh, imposed uh, legislation. Yeah. But again, take that as you will. Can I tell you why I don't like him? Oh, by all means. Okay, so the dude supported slavery, um, and he wanted to let states decide individually if they wanted to keep human beings for property just because of the color of their skin. Um, uh, he pushed. For- I, I do find it interesting, by the way, that a lot of libertarians are for states' rights when it comes to gay marriage. Uh, a lot less than they used to be. Under that, no, you it- can't. You can't dictate love. That's not okay. It's like dictating well, who Pauls, gets rights example, based on the color of their skin. The Pauls like- are big on that. Both of them, states' rights, uh, including the state's right to support tyranny. Yeah, I, I, I'm not, I'm not really buying that Ron Paul thinks that. I think he did that as like a, you know, I can still oh, fit okay. in with so you guys. So it's not then. what he says; it's what he must really be thinking behind all the words I say. Uh, I, well, I, say. I, I was just saying that I don't buy it. I wasn't saying that it's okay that he said it. Mm. It's you know, I was just saying I'm not really buying it, but oh. that's okay. Okay. Um. Mm. Uh, It's neither here nor there because he did say it and that's not okay. So um, uh, he pushed for removal of Utah's governor who was Uh, Mormon. Brigham Young was a bastard. I'm just going to say that. Uh, I'm not. He gonna... didn't like him just because he was Mormon and had to do with Mormonism. Are you, are you it had nothing with... to do with the guy. Are you familiar with the Mountain Meadows Massacre? No. Uh, the Mountain Meadows Massacre uh, is when uh, a bunch of Mormons in, I believe, the 1850s slaughtered a wagon train that came through Utah because Ooh, wow. it was, just because it was from Missouri. Uh, okay. Killed the men, women, and children, uh, and it is uh, highly suspected that Brigham Young made that order. So, wait, wait, weren't we talking earlier about the Mormons being the ones that were persecuted? It, it, and now the works. Mormons are persecuting people? It didn't take that long either. The second the, Mormon, the, the Mormons were persecuted in Missouri, and from almost the really second they religion. left Missouri, they started oppressing people themselves. What do you so, think people would fight so much about if they didn't have religion? Uh, they'd figure out something. I know. Politics, maybe. <laughs> yeah. Bloody wars over politics. Great. Yeah, because those don't happen yeah. already. But. Yeah. Ugh. Okay, um, he later asked Congress for troops to aid the Mormon uprising in Utah. So, like, flip-flopper much? I mean, real John Kerry right here. Um, And then... Speaking of which, bullet dodged, by the way. Just, just going to say Oh, that. I know, right? That would have been awful. He would have been, like, number one on our, you know, our shit list. No, no, he wouldn't have been one. No, 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 no. And we're anyway. st- saving that for a very special someone. Yep. Um, so... So he rigged the Dred Scott case by asking one of the judges to rule against Dred Scott's freedom in t- as a favor to him. Oh, classy. Yeah. So, you know, super classy guy. Um, and Buchanan ordered backup troops to Fort Sumner, even uh, though. Sumter. Yeah, sorry. Sumner, even though none had been requested and the currently and. The currently seceded South Carolina attacked the ship. In response to this attack on federal authority, Buchanan also did nothing. <laughs> so, so you're saying that so I'm going to a... send troops to to show you who's boss, and then when you attack my ship and sink it, I'm going to do nothing. So you're saying that it was a bad thing that he didn't retaliate violently? No, no, he and, just he's you know, no. Uh, I'm saying I'm saying that first. First, he initiated violence, and then when they used retaliatory force, he flip-flopped. 
and, and sh- became inconsistent on his strong stance of we're the federal government, respect my authority. Actually, it was the South that fired first there. He did not initiate violence. He just no, but in that situation, yeah, yeah. and no backup troops were requested. He just, you know, did whatever he, he wanted. He didn't to listen to his military general. He just went ahead and did whatever the heck he wanted, like he knew what was going on. So anyway, I don't like the guy. Um, So if that's not clear enough. So, but fun fact, it is believed but there is no conclusive evidence for it that James Buchanan and Rufus King, Franklin Pierce's VIP or VP, <laughs> VIP, VP, um, got it on. Mm-hmm. So they were a thing. Um, Interesting. Based on letters passed back and forth between the two. I guess it would have been easier. But the to letters cover have been scandal. burned. Yeah. Well, the letters were burned, and that's why there's no actual hard evidence for it. It was a lot easier to cover up a scandal. Yeah, their loved ones burned th- because you can burn letters. Yeah, you can't destroy the internet. So. Yeah, but you can destroy you know smartphones and computers. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah, but there's if you destroy always... them all, then you can destroy the well, internet. Well, that's the thing is that when you send a text message from one phone to another, you have to get it off of both phones. Yeah, it's so, crazy. Yeah, so letters, you know, only have to destroy one. You only have to destroy it one time. Yeah. So yeah. Um. So, uh, who's our next guy? Franklin Pierce. And honestly, I can't... Our last guy, really, for yes, tonight, actually. Yes, Number 35. Uh, so, the 10th least awful president of the United States, if you want to uh, classify it that way. Uh, and honestly, my biggest argument for him is that he didn't really do much. Uh, let's see. He um, uh, signed a treaty with Japan when it opened up to the West, which was kind of cool. Uh, and aside from that, he didn't really do anything. Well, he acquired Arizona and New Mexico. Yeah, is that is that really a good thing? Am I standing up for this guy? Okay, let me tell you why he sucks. Yeah, please right. do. So he aided in the coming of the Civil War with his short-sighted policies. Well, as I said before, there, there's really nothing that a lot of those presidents could do. That was a fight that was coming from a long way off. And well, at least he, he was didn't... also one of the people that rejected the compromise proposed by Henry Clay. So, you know, he tried twice and neither president listened to him two mm-hmm. in a row. Um, and um, so we're going to let him slide on that because we re- I really think I agree with you. It's, it was inevitable. Um, he overturned the Missouri Compromise and created the Kansas Nebraska Act. While this allowed territories more Tenth Amendment freedom with their right to choose to allow slavery or not, this still kept individuals in chains. It's never okay yeah, it to did get rule. kind of bloody there. Yeah, it's never okay to rule against the rights of people, even if it gives states more Tenth Amendment rights. The laws of nature come before any rights. By any government. I, I got to say, uh, when we get to this with uh, our Civil War president, I'm curious to know your opinion about this, but that, that can wait. Oh, Lincoln? You don't want to hear what no, I no, have no, to not say. My that opi- would take not, hours. Not your opinion of Lincoln, but your opinion of is it right to declare war to free people? He didn't. He That wasn't why he declared war. But we'll get to that. Oh, okay. It had nothing to do with the war, and that's okay, because he's well, he is on, even, even if he's you... one of the top on my shit list. Well, that's like, fine, but even top. if that didn't happen, would it hypothetically be okay to declare war to free slaves? Um, I'm not talking about, like, some private mercenary no, venture uh, to uh, liberate uh, some he, folks. I'm talking no, about a full military No, and war. hear me out. Okay. They had seceded. They were their own country, and we attacked another country and intervened in their policies. They were their own country at that point. I don't point. know what we were talking about. Sorry. I'm from the other side of the line, the, darling. <laughs> you're right. You're right. So Also, there was the fact the, that, you know, I missed it by, what, North, 130 years? North. Or so. The, the Union con- declared war on the Confederacy, which was its own country at that time. Mm. So it was like us intervening in I. Yeah, I'm getting an awful lot of us's and we's. I, I just got to say, I didn't I'm sign sorry. your social contract, <laughs> yeah. and that's really all there is to and it. And you know what I mean. So I know what you mean, but uh, words have power. I know, over and I'm working on it. It's, mm. a, it's a work in progress. Objectively. <sighs> So he also handled the rigged election for anti versus pro slavery governors in Kansas. And he did this very poorly when he just publicly condemned the anti slavery side for setting up a new government in Topeka. It was not 
presidential of him. These were the first bloody fights. There of wasn't the Civil that War. much presidential going on in Kansas at the time. There were a lot of people getting killed on both sides. Uh, John Brown was uh, chopping people in half with swords. Kansas was just kind of again one of those bloody bad situations. Kansas. It was actually called bloody Kansas. Yeah. Um. But yeah, he didn't actually act presidential. He didn't do anything to resolve the conflict with one of you know his states that he's supposed to you know be handling he couldn't even do his job so anyway um don't like him and uh he always went with his party over the citizens of the u.s so i'm I'm, I'm just gonna say there that if you actually just go with the the citizens demands in a u.s election you're gonna be left with a very fickle presidency it's gonna make no sense there's gonna be no internal consistency people are gonna be changing their fool minds all the time Well, then people then we need to get rid of presidents oh yeah yeah sure so that's the ultimate solution isn't it but fun fact he was from New Hampshire, which is actually embarrassing because I don't like this guy. Well, um, fortunately, I'm not from New Hampshire. He was considered among the most handsome men elected to the White House. I've seen his picture, too. I got to say, standards of beauty have changed. A uh, bit since I then. know, right? I was looking at him. I'm like, he looks like a young lurch <laughs> from, from Adam's family. That's not that inaccurate. Honestly. Um, <laughs> he recited his entire inaugural speech by heart, which mad props for that. I'll give him that. Um, he was also friends in college with Nathaniel Hawthorne, and he was considered a traitor and mobs swarmed his home in 1865. I bet that was a fun time. Oh, yeah. Okay. They didn't kill him, though. No. Nope. Anyway, so... Um, so one, th- once again, uh, so I just want to clarify here. These are not good people, in my not opinion. Not good people. These are just <laughs> the ones who are not actively doing terrible <laughs> things all the time, like we'll get to later. Yeah. Don't, don't worry. That stuff's coming. Uh, join us next week for another episode on the President series and another episode of True Objective. And um, you can find me at Objectivist Girl on Facebook or... Or YouTube slash Objectivist Girl without the I and girl. Um, you can also find me on, on the Voluntary Virtues Network at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Friday for Objectivist Girl Live. And um, I'll, and uh, where, where can I find you? Uh, you can find my articles on Liberty.me. I write about uh, pop culture, uh, God and politics, all that fun stuff. And also I edited a book the other day. Uh, it's, uh... I wonder whose book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Lauren's favorite person, Carlos Morales, wrote a book called, uh, Legally Kidnapped, The Case Against Child Protective we Service- Advertising Services. Advertising this on our show. I'm advertising something that I worked on, woman. <laughs> so I edited that. Uh, if you want to, uh, patronize me, you can look that up. <laughs> or you can, uh, find me on Thoughts on Liberty. Okay, guys. Um, find us every Monday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on our Facebook page, True Objective. And um, remember, guys, knowledge is not for all men, but for those who seek it. So keep seeking.